Good morning, folks. We've got a deep look at the sun today. A small uptick in flaring, the sunspots, and minor eruptive activity. We're going to take a look at submillennial super flaring power. Another reason the ice is such a historic mystery on this planet. We've got a special holiday item for you and a small family event tomorrow here in Colorado Springs. We'll start with our star, and you won't see much but minor surge activity around the sunspots and a coronal clearing with a small CME bottom left. Solar wind is calming here at Earth, and we are seeing a minor uptick in solar flaring into the C-class range. It's coming from a mix of the sunspots at this time, as you see here in 131 angstroms focused on X-rays and extreme ultraviolet light. The sunspots are very numerous, but not tremendously complex. Looking at the most complex of the groups up there on the north, we find that it really does not have that much magnetic complexity at the moment. Positive and negative are pretty well grouped and divided, rather than interacting. We do have the appearance of another complex group on the south incoming. One of the eruptions came from there, but we'll need about another day to fully diagnose its magnetic complexity. Remember, this month should bring the half-cycle surge in sunspots, which we are arguably seeing now, with a full activity cycle peak in the 5.9-month variety coming in February and March. Folks, we've all seen the papers and the evidence for the superflaring cycles and their effects. 12,000 years, 6,000 years, 3,000 years, 1,500 years, and the Carrington-like event every 100 to 200 years. But we have been seeing marks for something in the middle. It's like there's a gap at the millennial or submillennial level. Today, we get a good indication that that event should be around X70 super flare, more than enough to wreck the modern technological world. So we can now fairly well fill out the super flaring cycle chart of the sun. Always feels good to fill those gaps. Folks, this article was only interesting because it furthers the concept that they don't know how to measure ice history. They looked at a coring that should have spanned about 10,000 years and found themselves talking about a million years. By the way, it's a shorter depth of a coring than that which covered Glacier Girl in only 50 years, the World War II plane buried in 260 feet of snow and ice. Remember how for decades they thought the Tibetan ice caps were more than half a million years old? but Krypton dating, then said it's got a maximum age of 17,000. When they see one layer in the snow and ice, they don't really know if that was a full winter season or one weekend storm. They just don't. And the solar influence of isotope content makes it impossible for them to know exactly how old these ice features really are, unless they have a plane that went down at a known time like Glacier Girl, which by the way, implies faster accumulation rather than the eons of time you hear about often. Folks, tomorrow Cat will have a children's event at Play Street Museum. Rocky's also going to be out there with one of the Observer Ranch trailers. Come on out and see the crew. On our Shopify page link below and in today's link list, we have a raffle. Bit of fun for the holidays. It is a whole package up for the drawing, including all three textbooks, fleece jacket, a hat, one-on-one -on -one call with me, and more. We greatly appreciate your support. All links to articles and items found below the video in the description box. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.